So here we're going to um, look at the formation of endospores. Um, so not all bacteria produce endospores. Uh, it's typically um, gram-positive uh, bacteria of the group uh, Firmicutes. And it's not all the members of this group as well. Uh, typically, there are a lot of soil bacteria uh, that can do this. So um, in a time of stress, and usually it's nutritional stress, the cell believes it's going to starve uh, and potentially die. So uh, the formation of a spore is a way that the cell can preserve its DNA um, some RNA and additional proteins so that it can uh, essentially be reborn or that it can withstand environmental conditions that um, will essentially kill the living cell, but that again, its genetic material can survive that experience and then afterward uh, be revived. And so that's what this spore is. It is particularly um, noteworthy uh, in that there are certain bacteria like Bacillus uh, anthracis that produce spores, um, and that can be a, a very dangerous uh, pathogen. Um, but there are mostly a lot of soil bacteria that are beneficial that, that can do this as well. So the first thing that happens is there's stress. The stress triggers gene expression uh, within the cell, and that also will trigger um, an asymmetrical cell division. All right, so what will happen is that... Um, a separate lecture I'll talk about the cell division process and the proteins involved in the process and finding the midline of the cell but in this particular case what happens is that uh, a septum is going to be formed instead of in the middle of the cell uh, it's going to be formed uh, off set all right like this And then, obviously, the cell is going to divide. There's actually a transport protein that will then take the new DNA through DNA replication uh, over here into this compartment, which is now, we're going to refer to this as the uh, four spore, and this as the mother cell. So now we have the, uh, the four spore has its own DNA. After that process occurs, um, there's going to be some breakdown in the septum. And the mother cell is going to engulf uh, the entire uh, four spore. All right, so what's going to happen is... Try to break this down a little bit. Um, so this part here is going to essentially consume the other part. And so we will move this inward. Okay, right, like that. So oops, I should label some of these. So what, what is that what I'm talking about here? That's the cell membrane. And this outer one, the green one here, is going to be the cell wall. Remember, the, the four spore part also had a membrane and cell wall. So it had its own cell wall and its own cell membrane. And then its own DNA. mother cell engulfs the four spore like this and so as that continues what's going to happen is this will then you know, close up uh, in that process and so what I'm going to do is then pretend this is pulled inward these two ends will come together all right like this all right like that um, these will come surrounded as well, like this. And I'll finish.
finish it off. Now we have this structure, and I'm going to actually just slightly modify this so we can see it just a little bit better. I'm just going to move this away from it here. So I'm going to bring that outward a little. So we still have the, the mother cell with its cell wall and uh, cell membrane. But now what we have is this sort of different colored thing. We got this pink, this green, the green, and the pink. Well, remember the, the pink was um, going to be cell membrane. And usually we're going to refer to this now as the germ cell membrane. That's sort of our first layer. The second layer we're going to have now is this green one, right? That was the original. That's going to be the germ cell wall. And those two structures are fairly standard. So this is a standard cell um, membrane. So peptidoglycan, plus proteins, germ cell wall. Sorry, not peptidoglycans. Phospholipids. Plus proteins. And the cell wall is our peptidoglycans. So that's this layer. That's the cell membrane, okay? And then around it is going to be the cell cell wall. Now, outside that was the cell wall of the mother cell. So when it engulfed it, that part came around. That's this uh, kind of uh, the other green layer here. But now this layer, so we're gonna actually modify it, and that's what happens. All right, so that layer becomes what's called the cortex. Okay, that's our third layer. So the cortex is modified. Peptidoglycan. So it was the cell wall, the peptidoglycan cell wall of the mother cell. So as a, as a second sort of cell wall layer, but in this case, it is chemically modified and we now call it the cortex. Okay, that's, that's that layer. All right, outside the cortex, you're gonna have your, your other second mm -hmm. cell membrane, which is still fairly standard. Um, phospholipids, so we have a second membrane. And then what's going to happen here is that um, now genes are expressed in both. Genes, are going, genes that are in this uh, spore are being expressed, and there are genes in the mother cell being expressed, and there are different sets of genes being expressed right now. So the, the spore is producing um, contents for the cytoplasm that's going to now be protecting it soon, which I'll talk about. And then uh, the mother cell is producing um, molecules that are going to add additional layers that don't currently exist. Okay, so these first layers are all essentially are from the original membranes and cell walls of the cell and spore. So we just double everything up and we kind of invert the order as we go through membrane, wall, wall, membrane. Um, but the Second wall is really now we call it the cortex, something different. Outside of the outer membrane, okay, so this membrane, the second membrane or outer membrane, uh, is going to be a new layer. So this new layer uh, is going to be called the spore coat. That is five, our spore coat. And that's protein. So the 
the spore coat is a protein layer, this layer here, and it's produced by the mother cell and then makes this tough outer protein shell around the spore that protects it. Now, in Bacillus, um, that would be in Bacillus subtilis, which was the uh, organism most well studied for um, endospores. Bacillus. That would be the end. That would be the end of the layers. But what we found is that actually a lot of other um, Firmicutes produce yet another additional layer um, outside of this called an exosporium. Okay, so the exosporium. All right, that's this the final outermost layer. The exosporium is also protein. And we find that it's going to, it's used um, in binding. So there's these little fibers um, that stick out of it and they can help then the spore attach to a number of other structures. What would then happen is that the mother cell dies. And then we're just left with the spore. Our, our endospore. So those are the layers. The last part about this is um, what was going on inside uh, the uh, spore itself as some of the gene expression was taking place. So what's happening there is um, in the cytoplasm here, So that cytoplasm is now what we call it the core of the spore. And that contains the DNA, some RNA, unique proteins, and a, a unique molecule was being made during this time uh, and released in very high concentrations uh, in this cytoplasm or core. It's called dipicolinic acid. And the dipicolinic acid essentially um, what it helps dehydrate the spore um, and then preserves the DNA uh, and other molecules there so that they can survive um, through you know ultraviolet radiation, exposure to a number of other chemicals. You see you have these outer layers, these protein shells protecting it. So you have like multiple um, cell walls plus an additional protein coat. So we have the, the spore coat made of protein. We have the two um, cell walls, the cortex wall, which is a modified peptidoglycan. Um, and then we have the traditional peptidoglycan cell wall as well. Um, but here, these molecules could break down over time and be damaged or destroyed. But the dipicolinic acid, um, by removing the water, prevents many of the chemical reactions that would normally take place uh, and essentially uh, protects and preserves um, those biological molecules in that core. So that's pretty much it. So then what would happen is eventually this spore would encounter good conditions. It would encounter conditions where there is water and nutrients available and then layers would be shed and then this internal part here with the membrane and cell wall would become a new cell and it would just go back and if it was stressed again it, it could become a mother cell and it, it itself could produce a spore and this sort of would go on and on so in a way it's sort of like in a, a way of making it somewhat immortal uh, in that it's difficult to kill um, or die because anytime they are stressed and sensing that they may die they'll produce the spore and protect it so that conditions in the future once they're better, the spore could rise up and the cell can live once again.